What is vermiculture aquaponics? Vermiculture aquaponics is a concept of growing food without soil, but using water that has a food source, a nutritionally dense food source from worms. How does that work? So we collect a bunch of food scraps from people and we use a lot of our own stuff. You know, you've got old onion, pineapple, apple, you've got lettuce, and we have these little water spray emitters so that when the food breaks down here, we have oodles and oodles of worms also eating of the biomass. So the ammonium from the food sources being broken down um, gets collected into liquid form and we take it into these bins that we have and we pump that water into these grow trays we call this a mural this is a five layers of murals and there's uh, I think 20 or so plants per each layer so this is essentially ground 200 uh, 200 maybe 225 different heads of lettuce and we have dozens of these as you can see at the farm so we're growing nutritionally dense foods using worm tea what is worm tea so as the worms break down the foods and we squirt the water from the emitters in that <coughs> tray there it helps break down the mass and the ammonium gets converted into nitrate. And what is nitrate? Nitrate is a nutrition source uh, that helps plants grow. Big, leafy, green, blah, blah, blah. Uh, commercial agri agricultural farmers need nitrate, potassium, and uh, phosphorus for uh, their basic plants to grow. And so we collect the compost tea, worm tea actually, and we pump them into these trays. How do we do that? Well, we've got a little system of pipes with little emitters. You can see the water is coming through, but that's worm tea water, and, and it's feeding the roots of these plants. So you don't need soil. You don't have to till the soil, and that's not a good thing, tilling the soil, because it, just, it kills off the microbes in the soil, and then you do it often enough, you turn the soil into dirt. What is dirt? Dirt is just a compilation of very small rocks, but not enough nutrients in order for the plants to grow and thrive. So look at this, really healthy stuff. Really healthy stuff. <clears throat> and we got clover on the ground for the bees. We've got kale here. What the kale? And some tomatoes. And you know, of course we have some fruit trees here just as well. But we can probably right now grow about 4,000 heads of lettuce in this backyard. We can possibly grow with all the space if we set it all up for a complete utility, uh, about 10,000 heads of lettuce. And I see humanitarian usages here. A lot of places can't get plastic or pumps and things like that. We'll find a way. I think of bamboo farming. Bamboo, there's, there's about 1,200 varietals that we know of, of different shapes and sizes. Really, really utilitarian stuff and regenerative agriculture. This is the, this is what has to happen for us. The climate is changing. The way we do business is changing. The way we are growing our foods has changed dramatically and not necessarily for the better. So, because it's not nutritionally, nutritionally dense, you know. So, great idea. It's functional, very functional. And these are the seed trays. We pump some of the warm tea, um, shallow enough to keep the, 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 these, these little, little pods moist, keep the roots filled with nutrients. And this is our nursery. We've got 36 heads of lettuce on each one of these trays. When they get a little bigger, we take them to the adult section where the holes are spread farther apart so that the leaves of the plants can have full access to the sun to be a part of the to be a part of their photosynthesis process. When you have too many plants too close together, they 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 compete for nutrients and sunlight and air and all of that, making them vulnerable to stress and disease, thereby making them vulnerable to pests. 
and fungus um, and things of the sorts. And we don't have a lot of pest issues here because our plants are very healthy. Nutritionally dense and healthy plants don't send off that distress signal where bugs will go, oh, I need access to here. Uh, I need to... Uh, I need to eat this thing here because they the molecular cellular walls of the plants are too strong and don't give a, don't give the uh, the the bugs um, an opportunity to uh, proliferate there. So all very interesting. Can we save the world this way? That's just one mechanism. Teams of people all over are doing things to make the world a better place. And I say to you. As I remember hearing from Jane Goodall years ago, be vigilant of your consumption, for that is how you see the world. And I will tell you, for future generations, we are stewards. We need to behave better. We need to act more often to make this place a better place. It's complex, but it's not complicated. What's complicated is our relationships to our ego. Our ego will bring us down. Be vigilant. Lots of love to you. Cheers. Ask me any questions. I'm still learning, but uh, this is how it works. We learn together now, don't we? Cheers.